Good morning, everyone. It has been a while since we saw each other and uh, I want you to know that I miss you very much and I pray for you to be well and be safe. Uh, here we are managing the best we can our new reality. I could have never imagined in my ministry that I would be recording a YouTube video of my sermon with a certain degree of panic I don't want to be dramatic, but be advised that at any time my dog will run in here, start barking and mess the whole recording. So please bear with me. The essence of good writing is drama. And the essence of drama is conflict. No other story portrays more conflicting ideas about what, what is going on than the poems on the story. It is so dramatic. On the one hand, the Pharisees think they have a heretic on their hands, for Jesus is showing that the real troublemakers of this world are not the dispossessed and forgotten, but the cruel, the corrupt, and those who put profit before people. On the other hand, the multitudes praising God in Jerusalem go after Jesus that day, carrying palms, which are symbols of peace, and hailing him as king of Israel. That is why Palm Sunday is so festive. I bet the majority were hailing a new national leader to help them throw off the Roman Empire that was so oppressive to them. With these, these similar perceptions went these similar emotions. The Pharisees were angry. The multitudes were ecstatic. But the greatest contrast between, was between the crowds and Jesus. While the crowds shouted wildly, Hosanna, blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord, Jesus, instead of smiling and acknowledging their cheerfulness, he drew near and saw the city and he wept over the city, saying, If you, even you, had only known on this day what would bring you peace, but now it is hidden from your eyes. He wept for what he was sure would befall the very people who today were urging him on and who tomorrow, because of their blindness, will be shouting, crucify him, crucify him. On this Palm Sunday, we must remember that the world he died to save still resists his salvation. Even more than his, ours today is a world bewildered and of increased moral deficit. On this Palm Sunday, when we read about Jesus marching uh, to Jerusalem to his own death, it is really hard not to connect the narrative to the many marches all across our nation in our own time. The cross has become a symbol of our Christian tradition because our Lord Jesus Christ was killed on a cross. Death on the cross was the method of capital punishment by the Roman Empire and in the horror of such human act of destruction and cruelty, it is not hard for us Christians to reflect back, to look at the death of Jesus and to say to ourselves, never again. To look at the horrors of Holocaust and say to ourselves, never again to look at the evil of slavery and to say to ourselves, never, never again. To look at the inequality of women's rights and to say to ourselves, never again. To look at the immigrant children in cages and to say to ourselves, never again. To look at the victims of gun violence and say to ourselves, never again. We cannot allow Christ to be crucified over again, never again. Many Christians today 
like Jesus' disciples, tend to move by, the, by his kindness, confused also by his demands. So let's go for some clarity. Jesus always sides with those who are left out and left behind. The hardworking, honest immigrant who comes with a dream. The transgender person in the military who defends our democracy. Anyone or any group that is oppressed, discriminated and abused that Jesus referred to as the least of these. How could it be otherwise? If the Son of God sided with no one, God will be indifferent. Only by a clear understanding that God sides with those who are bruised, broken, the poor and the powerless, can we Christians claim that our God is a God of justice. It is shameful that the biblical passion for social justice has been turned into a teaching about individual salvation, which has the effect of rationalizing and perpetuating social inequity. I think Jesus Christ rides into Washington today to say that the eye cannot see it, say to the food, I have no need of you. To insist that those who live out and live behind their fellow human beings diminish their own humanity. He sides with the poor, yes, but for the sake of the rich. He sides with the weak, yes, but for the sake of the powerful. Judgment on the rich and powerful finally spell mercy for the rich and powerful as well. Jesus shows that if we have partiality in our love, then our learning about love is partial. That life and relationships are one and the same. That goodness cannot occur in isolation that now, as always, we need to affirm community of mutual need, 